Hello, my name is Gary Hemming and I'm a consulting data scientist working in the UK. Many of my clients are German insurance companies and a significant part of my work is building models to support their pricing processes. To speed up my workflow, I wrote an open source Shiny app called Lucidum to help me build and communicate models to my clients. Lucidum means shiny and includes the word lucid, meaning easy to understand. So let's jump into Lucidum right now, take a look at some data and build some models. First thing I'm going to do is show you the data set we're going to model. The final column over here to the right called price, that's the target variable. That's the price paid by the customer for their car insurance policy. And the remainder of the columns are going to be the predictor variables or the rating factors, as we call them in motor insurance. And these are the columns we are going to use to try and predict the price. The price distribution is very skewed. You can see that here, and you can also see the percentiles over towards the left. So when I build the models, both the GLM and the GBM, I'm going to pick a gamma objective function to recognize this skew. I've got a one-way line in bar chart here that cuts the price by whatever column I like in the data. I can choose that over here to the left. Um, and I've got a few options at the top to make these charts easy to read if I need to. So I can change the banding like this. And I can also group the low weights at the end where it's very noisy. So I can click these buttons here to make things easier to read. And just notice that the 17-year-olds are actually paying less than the 18-year-olds in this data set. So when we build the models, we're going to try and work out why that's happening. For categorical features, these charts can get pretty noisy. This is postcode area, which has around 120 levels. So I've got a couple of buttons to make that easier. I can sort by weight. So the biggest postcode area in this data set is B for Birmingham. And I can sort by actual as well. And then I can see the highest price to the lowest price sorted there. Some people prefer to see things as a table instead of a chart, so I can click on the table here and then I can just see the same information but in a table instead of the chart. I also have a UK mapping screen here so I can see the value of my variables on a map of the UK. So I can hover over here and if I hover over PO for Portsmouth where I live, the average price was £535 and there were 354 policies in this data set. Uh, this also works for postcode sector and postcode units as well, but they're not included in this demo data set to keep things manageable. So let's go and build a GLM. On this screen here, I have the GLM formula over to the left. I've already done one for you, so you don't have to type it in. I'm going to use a gamma objective. I've got the list here, but I've decided I'm going to use gamma and I'm going to build the model just on training rows. So if I build the model, this table appears over here to the right with the estimate, the coefficient for each of the terms that were in my model formula, standard error and a p-value. And the rows in this table are color coded according to the p-value. This model there all green, but there's a couple of screenshots here of models where there are statistically insignificant terms. And if I want to go and see how my model is doing for a particular rating factor, I can click on a term. This one involves no claims discount. Click on this button and it takes me back to the chart you saw before, but there's a couple of extra lines on it now. So we already had the black line, which is the actual price. We now also have the red line, which is the GLM prediction. And then the blue dashed line, which is the GLM partial dependency. And what that means is if I were to hold all other rating factors constant and only allow the no claims discount to vary, what impact would that have on the prediction of price? So I can look at this for any features I like over here on the left. And if I go back to age, as I mentioned earlier, let's go and have a look. And unfortunately, my GLM is still not working. The actual price for the 17 year old is considerably lower than what my model's predicting. And if I put some error bars on, I can see I'm, I'm clearly outside those error bars. So I'm missing something. So what this often means is I'm missing an interaction. And what I'm going to do now is go and build a GBM to find out what that interaction is. So I'm going to click on this button and we're going to build a GBM using the light GBM library. So I select the features in my model here. 
I can choose the parameters for light year GBM over here to the right and I'm just going to go ahead and build the model. And what's happened, my feature table has now been sorted in order of gain, so I can see that no claims discount is the strongest feature in this model. And towards the bottom right, I can see the model evaluation log. So we're using a gamma objective. The best value of the gamma objective on the test data was 7.3022. And if I zoom into the tail, I can see that iteration number 151 was the best value of the gamma objective. The model carried on training for another 50 rounds, but the metric never got better, so it went back to the 151st iteration. I can go to my model navigator screen, which gives me a little bit more information about my models, and as I build up GBMs, I can delete ones I don't want up here or save the ones that I do, and we'll come back to this game somewhere in a little bit. And I also have a tree viewer here where I can see the individual trees in my model. This can be useful when a model training is going wrong and unexpected things are happening in the evaluation log. You can go and look at the tree that's causing the problem and it usually tells you what feature is, is causing the problem. Here I can see one thing that I don't like too much. I wouldn't usually just throw postcode area into a model because if you have a level with many uh, levels like postcode area 120, it can be quite easy to overfit. So I'm going to go back to my model parameters and I'm going to impose a feature interaction constraint. I'm not going to allow postcode area to interact with any other features. And while I'm at it, I'm going to knock the learning rate right down because you tend to get a better model with lower learning rates. So let's go and build this model now. There we go. And if I go back to the model navigator, I can now see that postcode area indeed is not interacting with air with anything else because in the game summary table its dimensionality is one it doesn't appear in any other rows and i can also see that from the tree viewer if i go and find the first tree that involves postcode area that's the only feature in the tree it hasn't interacted with anything and if i want to go and see how my model is doing for a particular feature like we did for the glm then I go back to my GBM importance table, click on the feature I'm interested in, click on this button, and it takes me back to the chart we saw before. But now the GLM partial dependency, the blue dashed line we had before, has been replaced by the GBM partial dependency based on chat values, which is the red ribbons that you see here. And if I go and look at the age feature that was problematic before, we can see that the GBM doesn't have the problem that the GLM had, and I can show you that actually. If I put both the GLM and the GLM prediction on, the GLM in red is all the way up here. It's not very close to the black line, whereas the GBM is doing much better. So the GBM, with all the interactions contained in it, has managed to sort this problem out with the 17-year-olds. But the question, of course, is, well, what, what was the interaction that sorted this problem out? So if we go back to the model in, uh, game summary table here, it's actually not too useful. Um, I could go and look for age, and sure enough, it appears with a lot of other features, but it's not very obvious looking at this table what the interactions are. But there is something we can do to help us. If we go back to the features and parameters screen, I'm going to click this button here, EBM, which stands for Explainable Boosting Machine. And what this does, it changes the way that the model trains. So it will first train just two leaf trees, one dimensional terms, until there's no further improvement in the test metric. Then it will introduce the three leaf trees, the two dimensional terms, and so on. And it will repeat this up to however many leaves you specify. So now I'm going to build the model in this way. This takes a bit longer. The one D trees, the two, D, two leaf trees do take a long time to train, and you do need more trees to get the model. There we go. And there we go. And if we look at the evaluation log, you can see it has a slightly different shape now. This region here was where we were training with one dimensional term, two leaf trees. And this is then when the three leaf trees or the two dimensional terms began to come in. And if we look at our model navigator and look at the test metric, it turns out that actually this third model I've built has the best test metric of all. And the other nice thing is if I go down to my game table now, 
I have much more visibility on where the interactions are, so I can see that the strongest interaction in this third model that I've built is between age and license. And if I click on this button, it takes me to my chat value screen so I can have a look at this interaction. And what's going on is that there is a strong interaction between the customer's age and the license they hold. Customers that hold a provisional license at younger ages tend to get a discount relative to customers that have a full license that have passed their test. However, the effect of this varies with age, and at older ages, if a customer has a provisional license, then they're looked at in a different way by underwriters and insurers. And I'll just show you the second strongest interaction. The, in the model, this was between ownership and vehicle age. And if I go back to the SHAP screen, we can see that here, that for vehicles just purchased, ownership zero, the effect of vehicle age is quite strongly increasing on price. But for cars that have been known for a longer period of time, the relationship with vehicle age is less steep and actually looks like it starts to slow down. So to slope downward, sorry. So there is an interaction here between the vehicle age and the ownership, and this is a well-known interaction in car insurance. And I'm just going to do one more thing. Let's see which model performs the best. So what I'm going to do is calculate the ratio of the two model predictions using some code here, the ratio of the GBM to the GLM. So I'm just going to run that there. And I'm now going back to the screen we saw before. And I'm going to select that model ratio. And I'm going to plot both the GLM and the GBM. And let's get rid of some of the noise at the tails so we can see what we're doing. Let's put it on the training data to start with. Unsurprisingly, on the training data, the blue line, which is the GBM, is much, much closer to the black line, which is the actual. But the real test, of course, is on test. And if we click that button there, we can still see that the GBM is comfortably beating the GLM. And we can see that the, the spread of model predictions on the y-axis here. So that finishes my presentation. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions about Lucidum, feel free to get in touch.